Amen. Amen. All right. Welcome, everyone, to God in the Midst um, radio broadcast. Uh, this is the Friday Night Lights edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy. Um, this night, uh, we are on, on uh, the Get em Line, God in the Midst, I thank uh, Apostle Barbara Kizzy for allowing us to be on the line tonight. Uh, we we have some things going on with um, the Guiding Light Ministry, and so right now uh, the Guiding Light Ministry isn't isn't uh, active. So what we're we're going to continue on uh, with the Friday Night Lights program and uh, preach and teach the word. Uh, Pastor Paul. Um, uh, is also my co-host. He's not with us tonight. Um, his father, uh, uh, Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel McCoy, who we call fondly Uncle Bay Brother, is, is uh, taking a turn for the worst. And so um, they're going to have to take him back to the hospital tonight. And um, see what they can can do to uh improve his um uh medical condition at this time so we're going to lift him up in prayer uh as well so right now let's go to the lord in prayer um, the heavenly father we just come right now thanking you and praising you for all of your blessings lord we just ask you to have your way tonight um Touch as only you can, anoint as only you can. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over everyone who's listening um, to us over the uh, Get Them Radio and those who have joined us in Facebook. We plead the blood of Jesus over everyone's life, those that are listening now and those that will listen later. We plead the blood, the Heavenly Father, over their families, over their homes, the Lord, over over their finances, Lord, over their their bodies and their medical conditions, Lord. We we plead the blood over their jobs, the Lord, and all that you have blessed them with. We plead the blood, the Lord, over their communities, over their 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 neighborhoods, over their cities, towns, states, uh, wherever country, wherever they are, Lord. We plead your blood right now because we know that there's power in your precious blood we thank you dear lord for for this opportunity to come together over this technology and we plead the blood over this technology lord have your way tonight lord we give you praise we give you glory and we give you honor for it is in jesus name we pray we pray that someone might be encouraged tonight that someone might be strengthened and that someone might even be saved in the name of jesus Amen and amen. Again, I say welcome to the Friday Night Lights, and I am Pastor McCoy. Um, um, I am uh, learning this technology on this on this system, and I've had to use my uh, home computer to uh, broadcast the message. And so, um, if you notice, you see a little bit more of my background behind me, and the lighting may not be. Uh, appropriate because I had it set up for the um, for the actual uh, phone instead of the computer. But we're going to go ahead on anyhow. Amen, amen, and amen. Our text for tonight, our text for tonight uh, comes from uh, Luke, Luke chapter two, uh, Luke chapter two, a very familiar text very familiar text luke chapter 2 starting at verse 8 luke chapter 2 starting at verse 8. now there were in that same country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night and behold an angel of the lord stood before them and the glory of the lord shone all around them and, and they were greatly afraid then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of 
great joy which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David uh, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Now, when they had seen him, they made widely known the same which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at the things which were told them by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that had they, that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. The tag, the tag that I want to place on this text uh, tonight um, is a simple, simple tag. Tis the season. Tis the season of, of joy, of peace, and goodwill towards men. Oh, hallelujah. Tis the season of joy and peace and goodwill towards men. We, we've heard the Christmas story over and over again. We, we've heard it preached. We've heard it taught. We've even watched uh, Charlie Brown and the Peanuts and, and, and seen Linus say those famous words, you know. We, 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 we heard this stuff over and over again. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, goodwill towards men. We become so familiar. We've become so familiar with uh, uh, the Christmas story that, that that familiarity is at a point that, that most of the time we don't want to hear someone preaching or, or talking about it. It's just like, okay, yeah, I know the Christmas story. Yes, yes, you, everybody knows the Christmas story. But when we say that, we, we end up forgetting some of the details because the story has been told over and over again and we go to the little plays we watch the plays and 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 see the shepherds all all dressed up in their their nice beautiful outfits that people have handmade making them look like shepherds but one of the things that we forget is that when the angels showed up to tell these shepherds they were showing up to the lowest class people of that time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, 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 if you if you start rating folks, you would say, well, the 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 the, the tax collector and and, and 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 the shepherds and the fishermen and then the leopards. Those were the low class people in, in Jerusalem and Judea at that time. They, they were the outcasts, you know, they weren't held in high esteem, you know. And so when we, because they, they were considered people who were, were thieves, if you will, and vagabonds and all of that, they were the outcasts. I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody right now because see, you feel like you're an outcast, but, but I'm here to tell you, there's good news. 
Oh yeah, that good news means there's a gospel. That's that's the word. There's some good news that, that God wants to give. It's some good news that God wants to share. And, and, and he will use and come to anybody to share their good news. Oh, hallelujah. So tonight, 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 we, we're going to just look at this text and we're going to look at this text and, and just, just pull out some stuff out of it. Like I said, you've been familiar with the story, but, but let's, let's, let's look at the text. So my first point for tonight is the shepherds watched. They watched, they watched. L listen to the text again. They, they, they watched, they watched. Verse eight says they watched. See, now there were in the same country sheep, sheep shepherds living, living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. This, this, this says that they were watching their flocks. They, they were doing their job. They, they were executing the, 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 the gift of, of, of working that God had given them. They were watching over their flocks by night. And, and, and that, that brings us to, we, we ought to always be praying and watching, watching and praying because we don't know when that, when God's going to show up and say, surprise, oh, hallelujah. That's, 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 that's what happened to these shepherds. God just showed up. He, he sent his angels. And so they were watching. We we gotta be on watch, looking, because we we're, we're on the when two thousand years later we're not looking for the Messiah to come in a manger, but we're looking for the Messiah to come and and be in the air, and the dead in Christ will rise, and we'll get caught up. Those of us who are still living, or get caught up with Him in the air. We ought to be watching and praying. Oh, hallelujah. How often do we get so distracted with the things of life? We get so distracted with, with the things that go on in our day-to-day -day living that we don't spend the time to pray and watch and watch and pray because God is always up to something. Oh, hallelujah. He's always got something going on. And we just have to be on our watch. Oh, hallelujah. But the next part, the next part says, uh, 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 behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Oh, yes. Not only were they watching, but when this thing happened, they were in wonder. They were in amazement. Oh, hallelujah. They were in amazement about what was going on. And, and I'm going to read down to verse 14, and I'll come right down. It says, and then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people, for, for there is born to you in this day in the city of David, a savior who is, is, is the Christ, is Christ the Lord. And, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly, and suddenly, there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards me. These shepherds were wondering what was going on. And they first, they, they wondered at the appearance of the angels. The shepherds were wondering at the appearance of the angels. It, 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 it was like, whoa, what is this? They, they, it says that they were afraid. They, they were greatly afraid when, when they saw the angel. 
that stood before them, they were greatly afraid. Oh, I don't know if you've ever been to a surprise birthday party or someone has had a surprise birthday party for you. I can remember uh, one of our friends had a surprise birthday party a couple of years ago and it's also her retirement and her husband had arranged everything and got everything set up. And then we, we had the gathering and, 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 and he had told her that, you know, we're just going to go out to dinner and all of her friends and family members were there. And she walked in and we said, surprise. And it was like she, she was almost getting ready to have a heart attack, like, like a, 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 what is it, a red fox on Sanford and Son. But, oh, Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth, here I come. Because that surprise overwhelmed her. That surprise, just like, wow. And, and that's how we are sometimes when, when we get surprised. It, startles us. When we get surprised, it, 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 it knocks us off. And, and, and that's where these shepherds were. They were wondering at the appearance of an angel. And secondly, in this wondering, the shepherds were, were wondering at the statements of the angel of the angel and the angel says do not be afraid oh for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people yes here god is telling us through this angel as he's telling these shepherds don't be afraid when God surprised you. Don't, 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 don't be, 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 be all bent out of shape when God surprised you. I, I believe we ought to be on tiptoe anticipation, waiting for the sudden surprise of the Lord to step into our situation. And we ought to speak it by faith, saying those things that are not as though they are, and then wait on the Lord. And knowing that, that that old saying that he may not come when you want him to, but he's always right on time. We ought to be on tiptoe anticipation that God, yes, he's going to show up. And when he show up, he's going to show out. We shouldn't be caught in our fears, fears of our finances, fears about our family, fears about our future, fears about our job. Don't be afraid don't be afraid for God has sent his angel to watch over you and me and he's bringing good tides of great joy which will be to all people oh what joy what unspeakable joy I don't know about you. I've been in situations where I didn't know how I was going to get out of them. But God showed up and said, surprise. And I said, oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I wasn't afraid. And I've been praying and praying. Wasn't weary. Because weary don't add anything to you. Oh, hallelujah. So. They went deeper and told them what the good news was. These glad tidings of great joy. What, what was these glad tidings? What was this great joy? For there is born to you this day in the city of David, one who is the Christ, the Lord. I, 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 I love The Matrix. I love The Matrix. I love that movie uh, uh, with Keanu Reeves in it. And I love that movie because he is the chosen one. It talks about him being the chosen one. And they have been waiting 
for the chosen one. The children of Israel have, were, were, were like those in the matrix. They were waiting for the chosen one, the Messiah. They were waiting on the Messiah. They were waiting on the Christ, the anointed one, the one that was going to change everything. And they had been patiently waiting. And, and, and for these shepherds, it just kind of blew them away because they, they had heard over there in Jeremiah where, where it kind of said that, that when God makes this announcement, he was going to make it to the shepherds, the lowly people. Now, 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 I, I don't know about you. I don't know about you, uh, uh, but, but I have received texts of babies being born. Matter of fact, before the baby was even born, folks then sent me an ultrasound and said, pray for us. And I, then when they baby born, they send me a text or they post it on Facebook or they tweet it. And they say, oh, the baby's born, six pounds and seven ounces. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and you would think that God, instead of going to some lowly shepherds, that God, would with, with, with announce this to the priest and announce this to the kings and, and, and the dignitaries, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. But, but no, God didn't announce it to them. He announced it to the shepherds, the outcasts, those that people, they need them, but they don't want to deal with them because they unclean. They're always around these animals and they don't bathe right and they don't act right and, and they got their own little way of doing things because they traveling to and fro and they always had a knife on their side because they had to protect themselves and their sheep. You know, David, back when he was a lowly shepherd, that little boy was something else. He had his slingshot. In those days, David was appreciated for being a lowly shepherd, but 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 now they got big cities and they got all the temple and all of that going on, and, and they didn't appreciate lowly shepherds. But God, oh yeah, he he no matter how far down we are, he'll reach way down to pick us up. No matter how far we've fallen off the path, no matter how others have outcast us, God will still come down and, and talk to us. Oh, somebody ought to have a shout right there because you feel like don't nobody want you. You feel like don't nobody care about you. You feel like don't nobody is thinking about you, but, but I'm here to tell you God is there. And, and he knows everything going on in your life. And he's bringing you good news that there's a Savior, a, a Christ being born. But not only that, the angels told him about a sign. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth, lying in a manger. Now, now he had already told them that they were going to be in the city of David, which is Birmingham. I mean, uh, uh, Bethlehem, and 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 and, 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 and it just so happens that the story tells us not in this text, but but that David, that that Joseph and Mary had to go to, to, to Bethlehem to pay their taxes and, and, and to, to, to come and worship uh, uh, and all of that. And, and, and that's where they were in, in Bethlehem. And, and not only was they in Bethlehem, but it says there's going to be a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. That, well, that ain't nothing unusual. You would always wrap your child up in nice blankets and stuff like that. But the key of it was lying in a manger. You don't expect a child to be in a manger. And we make our mangers so cute these days. Oh, they're just so cute and nice and clean and pretty. And we put them out and we display our mangers. 
But I got to tell you, a manger ain't nothing but a barn. And it's a place that stinks because it's got animals in there pooping and flies and bugs, rats and roaches, everything. You're just in a manger. Ooh, nasty. Oh. But that's where God chose to be born, incarnated on this earth in a lowly place like that. And you know if he was born in a lowly place, he has no problem getting down with us even when we're in the gutter and in the sewer. He'll, he'll come down that that does not bother him because for the joy that has been set before him, he's going to do everything to save our lives and to save our souls. Oh, hallelujah. That's good news. That's good news. So the, 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 the shepherds were wondering. They were running at the appearance of the angels. They were, they were wondering at the statements of the angels. And verse 13 says, and suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Now, 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 I know we saw these big, these nice pictures of the angels all up in the air, and we think of a heavenly host as a bunch of angels all up in the air, and, and when we have our plays, we we have them singing and, and all of that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. But 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 now this this says basically the angel that was there first stood there, was talking to them. Now, now. All of a sudden, angels, multitudes of angels covered the heavens. Now, I always wondered, why didn't anybody else see that? Now, you know, the day if, if that had happened, everybody would have had their camera out, click it, click it, click, 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 click. There'd be videos of it, you know, and all of that stuff if that kind of thing happened. But for some reason, and what I believe is because the 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 the, the um, shepherds were in the middle of the night watching their flock in a secluded place, and nobody was out there with them but them. See, sometimes being alone and being isolated is when God said. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. That's when he suddenly shows up. That's when those suddenly happens. When, when you're spending time alone with the Lord, that's when those suddenly happens. People love going to fellowship and congregate with, with other believers, and we should not forsake the fellowship. But sometimes you got to just close the door and get in your closet and get to pray because that's when God suddenly shows up. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God, God wants a personal relationship with us. He has a personal stake in us. Oh, hallelujah. And so here it is. The angel started praising God and saying, most of us think about them singing, but but because we sing this, but but they were saying, glory to God in the highest on earth and goodwill towards men. Glory to God in the highest and goodwill towards men. This, this, this saying, I, I could spend a whole lot of time on this on this saying to, to help us to understand what they 
first of all, is giving God praise. God's desire is that we glorify him and we magnify him. And the angels, out of their, their, their free will, they chose to magnify and glorify the God. Glory to God in the highest. Do we choose to glorify him? Do we choose to magnify him? Yes. Yes, we do. But not only were they glorifying God in the highest, giving him praise, they said on earth, peace and goodwill towards me. They want us to have peace. God wants us to have peace, peace that passes all understanding, peace that guards our heart and our mind. And, and, and he got goodwill toward us because he knows the plan that he has for us, plans to prosper us and to give us peace and, and not to harm us and give us an expected end. He's got that for us. And that's what the angels told the shepherds. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill towards me. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, that's a wonder. <laughs> So they've been watching and they've been wondering. But now, after they heard the message, they went into action. Their faith was kindled and they went into action. They weren't wondering anymore. That's, that's why when we hear the word of God, it should inspire us. It should encourage us to, to get up and, 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 and go do the will of God once we've heard the word. And they went. Verse 15 and 16 says, so it was when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. Oh, hallelujah. They went. Yes, they did. Because they believed what the Lord had revealed to them. And they wanted to experience it themselves. And so they went by faith. They went. The question is, when we hear a word, what do we do? Do you go in faith, believing what you heard? Do you go and start acting out what you heard, knowing that God is with you? Oh, I hear the word of God says, I, I, you're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city and you're blessed in the country. You, you're the head and, and not the tail. Are you, are you hearing the word of God and are you going out and that, that knowing that you're blessed and you're highly favored? Are you just sitting back talking about woe is me? No, you got to go and believe that God has something great he wants to do in you and for you and with you. And so they went. And verse 16 says, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Could you imagine them walking through the city of Bethlehem and they going, hey y'all, uh, 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 we looking for a baby born in a manger. Y'all know about the, that baby? That we think he's the Christ. 
He, he was born in a manger. You, you, do you know where he is? And, and, he, and they're disturbing everybody. Folks say, man, get on out of here, old shepherds. You're stinking anyway. I don't want to hear nothing that you're saying. Get on away from us. Get on. Come on. It's too late at night to be coming up and bothering us with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes, when, when, when we have great joy in our hearts and, and great praise in our hearts and we're walking in faith, it's going to be naysayers in our lives. They don't want to hear nothing we got to say. They don't, they don't understand what God has done in us. And, 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 and here's the thing. We can't let that deter us. We can't let that disturb us. We can't let that hold us back because they don't know. They wasn't there. They don't know when and they don't know where. When God picked you up and turned you around and placed your feet on solid ground, don't nobody know that but you and God. You got to operate in that. Oh, hallelujah. I know I'm speaking to somebody now. Folks done told you you ain't nothing. Folks done told you all about your past. Even the devil is trying to mess with your mind, telling you about your past. But God is trying to tell you, I got you. I know where you came from, and I also know where you're at. And where you're going. Oh, we got to trust the Lord. So the, so the shepherds kept looking and they finally found them. They found them. They went and they found them. So the shepherds, they've been watching, they've been wondering, and they went. And now they are going to witness this marvelous, marvelous, glorious birth and they're going to see this baby lying in a manger just like the angels had told listen to the text verse 17 now when they had seen him they made it widely known in the same which was told them concerning the child they told Mary they told Joseph they told everybody they came in contact with. And all those who heard it marveled at the things which were told to them by the shepherd. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. That is to say, Mary, when, 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 when the shepherd started witnessing it and telling them the story, Mary said, they said yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. She, man, I, I already had the angel come talk to me. And, and Joseph was over there. I ain't, hey, yeah, dog, you know, hey. Mm. I, I saw it in a dream, too. You know, I'm good to go. Go on and say what you got to say. <laughs> Matter of fact, let me witness with you and say amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Because <laughs> they knew. That he, baby Jesus, was the anointed one. He was the Christ. So they witnessed. Now, family, after they witnessed, it says that they started worshiping. Then the shepherds returned. And they start glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard as it was told them. Glory and praise belongs to God. That's what a true worshiper will do. They worship the Lord when they heard the good news. They worship the Lord. When they not only heard the good news, but they saw it coming to fruition. I like what the old folks say when I, when I, you know, they used to say that when I gave my life to Christ, ooh, my hands looked new and my feet did too. I had a new walk and I had a new talk. 
Yes, when you when you are born again, when you become that new creature in Christ, you know the transition and went on between you and God, and something has changed in your life. That's the time that you start glorifying and praising God. And yes, you'll see that there it ain't gonna always be gigantic boom, uh, uh, not boomerang, but gigantic. Of catapults of change, sometimes it's just an increment. I don't go to the same play playground anymore with the same old playmates. I, I don't hang out with the same folks doing all of them same old things that I used to do. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I'm clean now from my drugs. I'm clean from my alcohol. I'm clean from my sexual permissiveness. I'm clean. Matter of fact, I'm saving a little money. I'm getting my life back in order. And every little increment counts. You are glorifying and praising God every step of the way, not just with your lips, but with your life. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I didn't preach all of that, and I had to get all of that out tonight. But finally, I need to give you some wisdom from this text. We saw the, the shepherds watching and wondering, and, and we saw them as they went, and they witnessed, and they worshiped. Well, what is the wisdom that we ought to get from this text? First of all, is God cares for you as a person. God truly cares. Your life, secondly, is important to God. So important that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God cares about your faith. He wants you to believe in him and to trust him and to give your life for him. And he wants us to be free of our fears. Don't be afraid to trust in Jesus. And then finally, he wants the joy of the Lord to be your strength. Oh, hallelujah. The joy of the Lord, which gives you peace and joy and goodwill. Oh, hallelujah. That's our word for tonight. I hope it's been a blessing to you. And before I leave this broadcast on Facebook and we start our conversation on the conference call, uh, I want to pray with you the prayer of salvation. And the reason I like to pray the prayer of salvation with you because I, I, I believe that, that, that uh, if any one of us were to die tonight, that we ought to know that our salvation is secure and that we have a home up in eternity to be with the Lord all the days of our life. Jesus was born. But he also died. He died for your sins and he died for my sins. And God raised him from the dead and gave him all power over heaven and earth into his hands that we might be saved. And all we have to do is activate our faith in him. Believe it in our hearts and confess it with our mouths. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will 
for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Jesus' birthday is coming up. And we ought to have a birthday gift for him. And say, happy birthday, Jesus. And the greatest gift that you can give him, someone who has everything, he owns the cattle on a thousand years. The best gift you can give him is yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Facebook, we're going to log off right now on Facebook. And if you want to um, get on the conference call line with us, um, the number to dial for the conference call is 619-639-4733. Again, 619 619- Six three nine four seven three three. If you join us on the conference call, we will be discussing the lesson, and then we also will have a prayer time. Um, I did see someone uh, put put a prayer request on the uh, in my inbox uh, on the um, conference call, and we will be praying. And so we thank you again for joining us and may God bless you and keep you. Amen.